Hey everyone, I'm going to go ahead and start this real quick. Um, I'm going to tag some of you. I'm not going to be long, but I just want to share a quick word with all of you. Um, and uh, first of all, I want to ask you the question what comes to mind when you hear the word Jonah? What comes to mind when you hear the word Jonah uh, or his or the name? For many people, uh, hi Mari, for many people we uh, think of the whale, right? When you, when, when you hear the name Jonah, what do you think of? Put, if you want to write it down on the comments, go right ahead. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna try to be quick here because I have somewhere else to be at seven or another Zoom meeting to be on. But uh, I just wanted to share this real quick with you guys. Today I wanna talk to you about the compassion of the Lord. Uh, as I was praying one day, I, um, I was uh, thinking about Jonah and uh, when I read the scriptures, of that book, I began to see not just the whale or Jonah's disobedience, but I began to see God's great compassion for a wicked city. I began to see God's great compassion for a wicked city. And I want to remind you, for those of you that might not know the story of Jonah, the story of Jonah goes like this. He was a prophet in a Hebrew man and God saw and it came the, the Bible says that the wickedness of Nineveh a city came before him now Nineveh was a Gentile nation it was a Gentile uh, group of people it was a very prosperous city it was a city that uh, was populated by hundred and twenty people it was quite advanced in um, a city that was known for its uh, advancements. It was, it was a great city, but it was also very, very wicked. And so God saw their wickedness, and he had just about enough. And he asked a prophet named Jonah to go and give them a message of repentance. But Jonah like everyone else in that area, in that, in, in that region at the time, hated Nineveh with a passion. Everybody hated Nineveh because Nineveh was a wicked city and they were ruthless um, with how they, uh, in their conquests, the Bible says, that their conquest, uh, the way they uh, conquered lands was quite ruthless. Um, and so, Needless to say, Jonah, you know the story. Uh, the story is about Jonah and the whale, uh, how he was disobedient. He got on a ship and he ended up uh, go, uh, being thrown overboard. I'm talking about Jonah and the whale today um, in the city of Nineveh. He got thrown into the water because of his disobedience and a whale came and swallowed him up and he was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights and we all know that in the story that he ends up being spewed out onto the shores where he was very near Nineveh and uh, the Lord spoke to him again and I love how the the Word of God says uh, that um, that the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, a second time. It came to Jonah a second time. Some of you are receiving a word from the Lord. He has told you, go here, go there, do this, do that. But, but you have put all kinds of pretenses before, before it. Maybe you even have prejudices as to why you shouldn't be somewhere. Uh, but the Lord is faithful and he gives us what a second chance amen so here we see that he gave Jonah a second chance to make it right and so uh, I love 
how Jonah had prayed even before he was he came out of the belly of the whale in in the belly of the whale he said but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving I will pay what I have vowed for salvation is of the Lord now remember remember we said that Jonah and along with many other people in that region they knew about the people of Nineveh they knew about their wickedness and they hated them but here, uh, Jonah had to humble himself and he had to realize that um, he had to remember the Lord. In verse 7 of chapter 2, it says, When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the, the, the Lord, and my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. Isn't that amazing? So those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. It says that, uh, he, you know, he's saying, you know, these people, they, uh, you know, you're, you're being merciful to them, but they, they're, you know, they don't regard it. But nevertheless, I will forsake, I will, I will sacrifice, he said. I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. Amazing with the voice of thanksgiving he had to come to a place of thanksgiving sometimes in a situation where we think it's hopeless and we really don't want to do something uh, we need to approach it with thanksgiving anyways and i love how jonah at this point in his misery because he really still didn't want to go he did not want to see those people in nineveh be saved he he really just wanted them to be destroyed but he says in verse 9 of chapter 2, he had to humble himself and he says, But I will sacrifice to you, amen, I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. I made a promise, so I'm going to go ahead and do it because salvation is of the Lord, amen. And so he, he recognized, look here, I, you know, God had mercy on me, he he took me out of this belly of the whale um, and I'm going to go ahead and be true to his promise because salvation belongs to him. I really believe that at that point, Jonah was still only thinking about himself. He was, he only wanted to save him, save himself. That's all he wanted to do. And so he's like, okay, God saved me. So I'm just going to go ahead and spread this message. But guess what he did? He went into the city and for three days he spread the message and he told them what? He called them to repentance. He called this wicked city to repentance. And it wasn't because he wanted to, but it was because God told him to do it. You know, in a day like, like what we're living in now, many people are, uh, they have their prejudices, they have their ideals, their um you know we have we have things that are filtered in our heart because of our experience because of things that we've endured things that we have gone through uh you know jonah here along with all the people that, of that region they knew how wicked nineveh was they knew they were ruthless people in their conquest and so they they they, they feared them greatly and they hated them the bible says that they hated them and so they he didn't want to go on his own account but he went anyways to what to give thanks to the lord as a as a sacrifice as a thanksgiving unto the lord he went and so once he preached he actually went in there and he said for for three days uh he he called the people to repentance and his message was simple the message was and jo it said and jonah uh it says, and Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, all he said was this, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And he was calling them to repentance. They knew the God of the Hebrews. Everyone in that region feared the God of the Hebrews. Isn't that amazing? They knew that if if God sent a Hebrew man to come and tell them this message, then they knew that they were in for trouble. So what did the people do? The people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed the fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of the least 
from the greatest to the least of them. Then word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from this from his throne and laid aside his robe, cov covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. I'm talking about a God of compassion here today, guys. Uh, when I was a kid and I heard the word Jonah, and even still as an adult, every time I hear Jonah, I think about the whale. But the most important part about this story and the highlight that we should all just be completely pleased with and just happy with and happy about is the compassion of God. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> The compassion of God is so amazing. Uh, it says here, and he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and carry mightily to and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Wow, that the king would call the whole nation to repentance. That is very key and very important that leaders call the uh the people that God has entrusted to them to repentance uh, when a leader does that and the leader himself repents there is a move of God that happens amen it says um, it goes on to say then God saw their works amen how many want God to see our works that they turned from their evil ways when we turn from our evil ways God sees us and God re and, and it says again, God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Amen. But this displeased Jonah. Jonah was not happy, and so he actually became very, very angry. And the, the scriptures go on to tell that he went over to a um to a hill or something overlooking the city and he he uh, waited for their destruction he actually waited to see if they would be dis destroyed um, when I read this I I wrote a little something in my journal that I want to share with you guys it says uh, do you it says the compassion of the Lord is like no other Jonah 4 4 God asked Jonah what did he ask him in 4 4 he said then the Lord said, is it right for you to be angry? Come on, did, is it right for you to be angry? Uh, he then goes on to make this point for the question. Nineveh was important to God just as a plant that gives shade to someone in a hot, sunny day. It, um, it's even more so. Nineveh was spared because the Lord loved them. Nineveh was spared because the Lord loved them. As wicked as they were, God had compassion over the 120 souls that were on that land and even the animals. So everyone survived the wrath of God because they repented on that day. And when we see the, the story here, the emphasis uh, that we normally hear about is about Jonah's disobedience. But I really uh, am seeing more and more that this is all about God's compassion. Amen. Um, we see his, his love for a world, even in its current condition. Um, I saw him looking down at Nineveh as I prayed through this scripture. I saw the compassion of God. Even uh, this, this, uh, this particular day, I had asked the Lord. I said, God, I want to see. I know, I'm, I know I'm supposed to pray for the nation right now. I know I'm supposed to pray for our current situations in the world and how everything is. Uh, but I want to pray your heart. I, I don't, I don't want to ramble. Amen. I don't want to just say whatever comes to the top of my head. Because a lot of times we can be like Jonah. Come on. 
we can be like Jonah. We have our we have our prejudices, we have our ideas, we have our thoughts that filter our prayers. And so we need to be careful and we need to be conscious of what God's heart for a nation is at the moment. And we need to go before him and ask these important questions and say, uh, what is what is it uh, that you see, Father? Uh, you know, what do you see? What are you seeing about our current events? This was the recent. This is just very recent, a few days ago. Um, and I saw him looking down at Nineveh. The Lord blessed me with just all I saw at that moment was I saw him looking down at Nineveh with tenderness in his eyes. And uh, that that really blew me away because we all know that Nineveh was a wicked city. And much like what we are experiencing now, where wickedness is very rampant, uh, very rambunctious, uh, uh, you know, it's manifesting all around us. I mean, some people would say, well, that's always been an issue. But I think that when you pair up media with it and you pair the wickedness of this world with every you know with just every eye is seeing it it's just blatant right there in front of us i just saw something myself that one of the newscasters from cnn said that jesus himself admittedly said that he wasn't perfect i've i don't know what bible he was reading but that was a very wicked thing for him to say because that is not true uh i've never heard or read in the bible that Jesus said that he was not perfect. Uh, and so that was, we all we all know, and we all know that Jesus was both 100% God and 100% uh, man. And so that was what made him very unique, and that's why he was able to fulfill the law. Amen. And so we see so much wickedness being thrown at us every day, every day, every day. So as believers, where are we? Where are we? What uh, do? How do we pray? Do we pray uh, like Jonah that wanted wanted that city to be dis destroyed? Um, Jonah never really understood God's affection and love for a wicked city. In fact, he didn't want God to save them at all. He he wanted to see the city destroyed by the wrath of God, and I believe that God still looks from heaven with love and tenderness toward a lost and dying world he sees he sees us and sees the wickedness uh, and yet his message is repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand come to me turn from your wicked ways the message has always been the same it hasn't changed for years his desire is to give us life and peace and an everlasting relationship with him. He doesn't want to destroy the earth. Jonah, on the other hand, is a foreshadow of religious folks today that preach the gospel with resentment or even hatred toward the people. He loved a plant more than he felt compassion for the 120 souls of Nineveh. I, in that uh, scripture, it says that a plant, you know, Jonah went and he stood at a, uh, a, you know, to watch into the city to see if it would be destroyed. And he waited for its destruction. And, and the Lord felt compassion for him. And he said, you know what, you're, sit, you're sitting out here in this blazing heat and it's hitting on your head and you're getting gonna get burned so let me let me plant a plant there let me let me put a plant there so that it could give you shade come on let me put a plant there so that it can give you shade uh but then uh it said uh, and and the lord i'll read i'll read it to you it says in verse six and the lord god prepared a plant and made it come up over jonah that it might be shade for his head to deliver him from his misery <laughs> so Jonah was very grateful for the plant but as morning dawned the next day God prepared a worm and it so damaged the plant that it withered amen and it happened 
when the sun arose that God prepared a vehement east wind and the sun beat on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. Then he wished death for himself and said, it's better for me to die than to live. This is how miserable he was. He hated being there. He did not want to go to Nineveh. He wanted to see those people destroyed. He, uh, he, he was resentful, uh, probably even towards life now, because he's saying, why, why did God gift me with the gift of prophecy? Why did he make me a prophet? He's probably going through all these emotions. And then God said to Jonah, I love this. And he says, is it right for you to be angry about a plant? And he said, this was Jonah. He was atrevido, like we say in Spanish, bien atrevido. He said, he said, um, it is right for me to be angry, even to death. But the Lord said, you have had pity on a plant for which you have not even labored for, nor made it grow, which came up in at night and perished in a night. And should I not have pity on Nineveh, that great city in which are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between their right hand and their left, that's how the book of Jonah ended. God's compassion for people is so great. He loves his people. And we see that thousands of years later, he had so much compassion for the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? So what are we saying and why? I want you to really, uh, as a believer, I'm calling you up higher. What if God is calling you a modern day Jonah and you won't go because you have a prejudice in your heart or you have a, a resentment toward a people? We don't know what the people of Nineveh may have done to personally afflict uh, Jonah. We don't know the story, uh, but we do know that Nineveh was a wicked city and it was, re re it was very ruthless in the way it conquested. So who knows the atrocities that they did to cause Jonah such hatred in his heart toward those people. But God showed us something here that he has compassion over the good and the bad. He has compassion over the lost and he has compassion over the believers. He had as much compassion for Jonah as he had for the people that were lost. Amazing that he would cause a plant to grow to cover him from, his, from, from the sun and, and, and give him some rest, amen. But Jonah still did not catch it. He did not catch the clue here that God is a God of compassion and grace and mercy. In fact, his mercies are new every morning. Isn't that amazing? And so we have to ask ourselves, do we want to see a people saved or are we waiting and looking from afar for the destruction of a nation? Are we really wanting to see a people saved? Y'all are quiet today. Ain't nobody saying nothing, but that's okay. I'm not mad at you because I'm going to tell you something. God is calling somebody higher. He's calling a people who have a message uh, to give proclamation to a nation that is dying. And, and we, we, you know, someone asked this the other day, where is the church? Where are they? What are they saying? What are they doing? Well, we're at home enjoying our comfort uh, and, and not really getting out there and doing what we're supposed to do. Amen. I'm calling every every believer. I'm speaking to every believer out here. Find a people to speak into their life. Amen. To to be uh, to be 
the Lord's compassion and mercy in the midst of darkness. What people are clamoring for is grace. What people are clamoring for is mercy. Who will go? Who will stand in the place and say, I, Lord, will go because of your great compassion, because salvation belongs to you. I don't get to dictate who gets saved and who doesn't. I don't get to say who gets to be um, uh, you know, a believer or not. It, it, that, is, that is the work of the Lord. That is the work of, of the Holy Spirit. And so let us go before the Lord and ask the Lord to fill our hearts with his compassion to see the world with the tenderness in his eyes. I, as I shut my eyes, I still see Jesus standing and hovering over a city that is lost and wicked, and his eyes are filled with tenderness and compassion and grace and mercy for these people. Father, I thank you so much for your loving kindness. I thank you, God, that you love the good and you love the bad people as well. And Lord, we are all bad. <laughs> The Bible says there's not one of us who is good. Not one. Not one. Not one of us is good. We all got the good, the bad, and the ugly, oh God. And so you have been so compassionate with us that you would even see the heart of Jonah and have compassion on him to him for him to experience what he did that you saved him that you gave him a second chance and then a third chance to get his heart right but yet he still he still couldn't see like you saw he still couldn't see with the same compassion that you had, Lord God. Father, help us. Help us, oh God. We believe, but help our unbelief, oh God. Help our, and we know, we, I, I want to add this. We, we have compassion and we have love for, for people, but Lord, help us where we don't have it, Lord God. Where we, where we have our prejudices, where we have our, our, our ideals and the filters of our experiences that are in front of us and don't let us love people the way they you love them lord god help us lord to see with the eyes of a, of the king for you have you have made us oh god in your image oh lord jesus and you have uh, placed a a mandate on the believers of this land to be peacemakers oh god to be people of honor and and people that will stand at the gate that, that will be people who will draw uh that will lift your name high so that you would draw all men to yourself oh god and so holy spirit we welcome you into every relationship that we have amen father we welcome you holy spirit into every relationship into every person that we meet Oh, Holy Ghost, we invite you to walk with us, that every hand that we shake, every eye that we lock with, Father, that the Holy Spirit would come forth like a fire and would captivate the people that we lock eyes with and that they would say, I need, I need, a cell. I need that same salvation that you have. I need to have that same experience that you have. I want to know what you are on. <laughs> Amen. And Lord, that they may want what we have, Lord God, that they may want to see the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that they may all bow before your presence and awaken to their salvation. Oh, Lord Jesus, for this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice in it, Lord God. We thank you for the wonderful story of Jonah and your great compassion for Nineveh. In Jesus' name we pray, may you have compassion over our great nation, the United States of America, and may you have great compassion, Lord God. May you continue to, to give us the opportunities to get it right. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you guys. You have a great night, and I will see you, if not later, I will see you in the other side of eternity. Mwah. Love you.